This shows you as heavy as I was. How loud are you? About 280. 18 plus percent of our children right now are obese. If you go with the flow in America today, you will end up overweight or obese, as two thirds of Americans do. I don't want to be fat for the rest of my life. I've got diabetes. Sleep apnea. High blood pressure. I get dizzy when I get up. Everything's hurting now. We don't now take this as a really serious, urgent national priority. We are all of us individually and as a nation going to pay a really serious price. My mother passed away uh, due to complications from obesity. I have one son who does struggle with his weight. My daughter struggles with her weight. Two of my brothers are also overweight as well. I was very close to my brother. He was a um, very large man. He, When he died, he was close to 400 pounds. I've struggled with my weight uh, all my life. My weight's been up and down all my life, too. I do notice that he is getting to look just like a little me. There's no doubt that genetics, the DNA that we inherit from our parents, affects how much we weigh. We know uh, that about 60 to 70 percent uh, of the risks of obesity are heritable ones, and we know that from looking at families. We know it particularly from looking at identical twins that have exactly the same DNA, and if one of them is obese, there's a very high likelihood the other one will be as well. Now, sometimes when people hear genes, affect a disease. They think there's one gene, and it's sort of like Mendel's peas that we learned about in school, or eye color. When it comes to obesity, for the vast majority of people, there's no one gene that makes a difference. There's many, many genes, dozens, perhaps hundreds, which add up to a susceptibility when exposed to this environment we live in for getting more overweight or not. many genes that could potentially be contributing to the obesity. We don't understand yet how, in a given individual, these genes play together to determine this. We don't know how many are playing a role in a given individual. Is it in the brain and how they perceive food or how they feel hunger? Is it in their a gastrointestinal system? Is it how much they absorb of the food? Is it in how their body processes it? Is it how much fidgeting they do or how much exercise they're inclined to do? And we don't as either doctors taking care of patients or as researchers even have good ways to measure these things at the level of resolution we need to explain why one person's obese and someone else isn't. I believe that people think that I eat way more than I actually eat. I've been out with friends and, you know, we've had our dinners and my thinner friends will be eating so much more and having dessert and having a drink and I bypass all that and, and I'm full and they're thinking, there's no way, you're gonna go home and eat in secret. They just don't get it. In fact, I don't even get it. Why, <laughs> you know, why am I so overweight? People often want to know, what, what am I doing differently than someone else that results in my gaining weight? It doesn't necessarily stand to reason that the thing we can observe in ourself or in our loved one as the behavior is necessarily the root cause of why they end up obese. And it may be too subtle day to day to necessarily detect. If you think about what obesity is, it's actually a very subtle difference over a lifetime and how you process calories and energy that results in your gaining 10 pounds or 20 pounds or even 100 pounds. As a fraction of all the calories you eat and expend in a day, that's a teeny fraction. So it's not that the system is broken, it's just on a slightly different, slightly different trajectory caused often by many different genetic variations. Evolution happens very slowly. Humans evolved over hundreds of thousands of years in Africa and then spread across the world. And our DNA has not changed that much since the period of time before modern society. But modern society is now racing ahead at an incredible rate. It 
if one looks over the course of the last 20 or 30 years, it's clear that the obesity epidemic has come on pretty quickly. We are designed for a very specific type of environment, low availability of calories, need for energy expenditure to get the calories. What's the environment we're living in? We're living in an environment in which it's possible to eat yourself into obesity basically on a single city block and in which you can call in without any physical activity other than dialing the cell phone, unlimited number of calories. You think about the way we lived even 100 years ago is incredibly different with regard to food and physical labor. And that mismatch between the highly biological systems that evolved over hundreds of thousands of years and the incredibly rapid changes in our access to food and our need for physical labor explains why we have, to some extent, this obesity problem today. I'm a relatively short person, and I don't feel like that's my fault. No one imagines in society that by trying harder, I could have been taller. But somehow, when it comes to obesity, there's this huge overlay that it's, that it's entirely uh, within our control. That's what some people in society think. And I just don't really get it, because why with height and weight, even though they're both influenced by genes, they're both influenced very strongly by the environment we live in today. They're both seeing what's called a secular trend, which is over time, people are getting both more overweight, but people have gotten much taller over the last century or two. And yet one, obesity, is seen as your fault by many people in society. One of the things we're trying to teach is that this is a biological process. We're not only trying to confirm, I think, what many obese people know, and give them sustenance in that way, but to educate our peers, meaning physicians and other scientists and the community at large, that this is not what you think it is. And just because a behavior is the ultimate demonstration or reflection of the drive to eat doesn't mean that that's in conscious control in the sense that many people think it is any more than you can consciously, or most of us can consciously control our blood sugar or our blood pressure. Genes can be thought of as the hand of cards you are dealt. It's up to you to decide how to play that hand. We've all been dealt uh, cards uh, by our ancestors based on their environment, but now we have our environment, which puts us in a bit of a challenging situation. For a long time, it was assumed it was all about individual behavior. But I think the more we look, the more we realize that those behaviors are set by our genetic and our developmental experience. We can't do much about a genetic background. We can do a hell of a lot about it, the way we live our lives. You can control what you eat, you can exercise, you can do many things to improve your health. It's a little bit hard because it's trying to understand that you're not solely responsible, but you still have responsibility. Sometimes the person who wins the round isn't the one with the best cards, it's the one who plays them the best. And so they shouldn't feel like just because they have this component of susceptibility that they're defeated by it. Thank you.